eventually we will do a sleeper cab where we can send drivers out for multiple days at a time as we expand the charging network. One year after the delivery of the Tesla Semi, this revolutionary freight transport vehicle has proven its crucial role for PepsiCo's 12-hour operations, contributing to tasks such as transporting the Cybertruck to test locations. Throughout the year, it has solidified its position as the leading heavy-duty electric truck, covering 1,067 miles in a single day during the Run On Less event. However, the Tesla Semi may have undergone some influence from the Cybertruck, leading to updates in performance metrics compared to its initial specifications. So, how will this big rig change in response to these influences? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing the bell so you won't miss out on any of our interesting videos in the future. Now, let's get started. We all know that the Cybertruck and the Tesla Semi share many technical similarities, belonging to the same categorization and both utilizing high voltage architectures ranging from 800 to 1000 volts. Some speculations even suggest the Tesla Semi has started experimenting with a 4680 battery technology produced at the Nevada Gigafactory similar to the Cybertruck among other shared features. Due to these technological similarities, the upcoming Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab may be influenced to some extent by what Tesla's released with the Cybertruck. Why will Tesla Semi probably update a new range for the upcoming version? No different from Cybertruck, Tesla Semi was also launched at the end of 2017 with two unique variants, Quad Independent Motor and Tri Motor. As far as we can see, the tri-independent motor will offer a range of 300 miles on a single charge, and the quad motor will offer a more impressive 500 miles. Please note that, according to Elon Musk, these ranges are achieved when the Tesla Semi is fully loaded with a GVW gross vehicle weight of 80,000 pounds and operates on the highway. This means that in an unloaded state, the Tesla Semi could surpass these range figures, potentially reaching up to 400 miles and 600 miles for the respective versions. Meanwhile, the Cybertruck's range after the delivery event is probably something enough to sway customers as it brings many different emotions. The dual motor increased to 340 miles compared to the 300 mile range offered announced before. But Cyberbeast is the opposite. This variant initially had many expectations when Tesla announced a range of up to 500 miles. But in the end, 320 miles was the final specification that customers received. So, is it possible that the upcoming Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab version will have a range adjustment? The answer may be yes or it may be no, because to answer this question, we need to consider many factors such as the role of the two vehicles, battery technology, and finally, the challenges created for the manufacturer. First, let's talk about the reasons Tesla might adjust the range down for the Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab version. As far as we know, the addition of the bed system meant that the rig had to revamp the entire cabin area to arrange it in the most efficient way possible. It is common practice to extend the size of the cabin area to the rear to keep the cockpit in the most comfortable space. It's nice that we'll have a truck with a more comprehensive interior, but we also have to accept that adding the bed and lengthening the cabin will certainly increase the weight of the Tesla Semi. We wouldn't be surprised if it were claimed to weigh around 29 to 30,000 pounds, which would mean less payload capacity if combined with a very heavy battery pack. So reducing battery pack size is something Tesla can do. The average Tesla Semi day cap weighs about 26,150 pounds. The Fontaine Traverse HT weighs 17,700 pounds, and the remaining cargo boxes or loads are allowed to weigh up to 37,000 pounds, all adding up to about 80,000 pounds, a total load most efficient weight even if it is allowed to weigh 2,000 pounds or more than the diesel truck. In particular, the Tesla Semi 500 miles variant battery has a capacity of about 900 kilowatt hours and weighs about 10,000 pounds. We've analyzed the weight of Tesla's battery in previous episodes. 
Currently, the type of battery used for Tesla Semi at this time and in the future has not been mentioned at all. Everything is still just rumors about battery technology such as the 4680, 2170, LFP, or even pouch battery cells. In case Tesla will apply the 4680 type for the upcoming version of Tesla Semi, the possibility that we will have a smaller battery pack is even higher when looking at what the manufacturer has for the Cybertruck. According to Haggerty, a Cybertruck with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack needs 1366 cells, and if a 900 kilowatt hour Tesla Semi does the same, that's at least nearly 10,000 cells for a Tesla Semi. It's too much and too heavy for Tesla to apply, so reducing the battery capacity to 800 or 750 kilowatt hours is something that will likely happen in the future. If this happens, we could very well end up with a semi-sleeper cab with around 400 miles or 350 miles of range that comes with a rather expensive range extender option package, something Tesla also does the same to Cybertruck. However, let's talk about the more optimistic possibility that Tesla will not reduce the range of the rig in the next version given how important range is to Tesla Semi and Cybertruck customers. The truth is that Cybertruck's range is quite important in influencing the travel experience. But considering the nature of a specialized off-road vehicle, range is definitely not the top factor that customers care about, because they care more about performance. Meanwhile, the Tesla Semi is the opposite. This electric truck originates from the mission of serving delivery work, right from the invention idea when J.B. Straubel said that Tesla used diesel trucks to transport transmission units and electric car batteries from Giga Nevada to Fremont were pointless, so Straubel, Jerome, and Franz built the Tesla Semi to serve the sole purpose of being the company's transport vehicle with virtually zero emissions. If it is specialized, for transportation, range, and load are the top factors for customers to consider. On the other hand, Sleeper cab serves the purpose of long-distance cargo transportation and allows drivers to make overnight deliveries, so the range is always a priority factor, no less than load capacity. What could happen to the big rig cost when looking at the Cybertruck? Next, the price of the Tesla Semi in the upcoming version will be 90% increased to over $250,000 when we look at the nearly 60% price of increase of the Cybertruck compared to what was announced in 2019. The often rumored price of $150,000 and $180,000 has been discontinued for this rig for a long time. Considering the economic fluctuations in the US and the world, at least it has reached the $200,000 mark in 2021 and is currently at around $250,000. This was confirmed when at a PepsiCo factory press conference in April this year, it was learned that the majority of the initial costs of most PepsiCo trucks are covered by state and federal grants. More specifically, the agency's executive director, Alberto Ayala, said the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District paid for 18 of the 21 trucks that will be used at the South Sacramento bottling plant with a grant of 4.5 million US dollars. This is an implication of the price of the big rig, and it is twice the cost of a diesel truck. But compared to fuel cost savings, the Tesla Semi can save $200,000 in the first three years. Keep that in mind. The price increase is also a way for Tesla to offset the cost of building the high capacity 750 kilowatt megacharger stations. For supercharger stations, the costs are relatively low, and Tesla is rapidly deploying them for Cybertruck, with seven stations being set up in just two days. Supercharger installations, on the other hand, are different. Each installation typically costs around $6 million and involves a much more complex process than regular charging stations. Returning to the expected price increase for the Tesla Semi, it wouldn't be surprising if it hits $280,000 for the upcoming version. Currently, in the electric truck market, almost none are priced below $300,000, with notable examples like the Freightliner eCascadia, Nikola Tre, and BYD ATT. It's important to understand that developing an electric truck requires a significant amount of time and money, involving manufacturing technologies 
entirely different from other models, with complexity at every stage. Therefore, even if the price increases, the Tesla Semi will still be considerably more affordable than any other electric truck on the market, boasting unmatched specifications. Moreover, commercial companies often benefit from financial support and exclusive policies, making the cost sometimes less critical for them. And what is the coefficient of drag on something like this? Like my Tesla, I believe, is what, 0.25? Oh, no, it's it? less than that. Point, a point two point oh, two point two two. Okay. Yeah. Tesla continues to quietly adjust the Tesla Semi. They just don't publicize it. We've learned about this through the revelation that the drag coefficient of the Tesla Semi has silently been reduced to point two two instead of the initially announced point three six, as disclosed by Tesla engineers during a conversation with Jay Leno. There are likely other parameters that have been adjusted, but the manufacturer has not disclosed them at the moment to maintain focus on promoting the Cybertruck. Now, let's discuss some rumors related to the truck. The Tesla Semi has been subject to many intriguing pieces of information, and even we are unsure whether they're true or just oral jokes. How interesting is the rumored Tesla Semi? First, there's information that a team of Tesla engineers is on call 24-7 at PepsiCo, ready to work on and address any issues with Tesla semis, and no one at PepsiCo is allowed to repair the semis except for them. We believe this is accurate because the Tesla semi is the company's only electric truck, along with a fleet of other diesel trucks, so repairing this vehicle is also different and Tesla engineers understand it better than anyone else. Having a dedicated team of Tesla engineers at PepsiCo could be an advantage even when this drilling rig rarely requires maintenance. This helps ensure that technical issues can be addressed immediately. Keeping the Tesla engineering team on site can optimize the company's workflow and logistics, providing flexibility and maximizing efficiency in the transportation of goods. This enhances the performance and reliability of the Tesla Semi within PepsiCo's fleet, ultimately contributing to increased efficiency and reliability. Another interesting rumor, though not entirely implausible, is the speculation that the Tesla Semi is said to be using pouch batteries manufactured in Nevada. Initially, this sounds quite unusual, as all batteries produced by Panasonic in Nevada are cylindrical 4680 cells and Elon Musk has not previously revealed any pouch battery packs. However, a hypothesis suggests that Tesla might have imported these pouch cells from China and assembled them in Nevada. Pouch cells have the potential to be well suited for the Tesla Semi and after the addition of sleeper berths because they are lighter than cylindrical cells, they cost less and are flexible in shape allowing for customization in size and form in various scenarios. However, in terms of durability, they certainly cannot match the robustness of cylindrical cells. Finally, there's speculation about Tesla potentially discontinuing the production of the Tesla Semi soon due to its lack of profitability compared to other models. Specifically, some individuals suggest that Tesla initially produced this drilling ring because Elon needed a pump for Tesla stock in 2017. Coincidentally, Tesla was on the brink due to challenges with the Model 3 launch from 27 to 2019, a fact acknowledged by Elon Musk himself. However, we believe that this is a rumor and a nonsensical joke from those who harbor resentment or seek to just taunt Tesla. First, the Tesla Semi has been part of Elon's long-term developmental strategy long before its official debut back in 2017. In November 2017, when the Tesla Semi was introduced, Tesla's stock rose by 2.5%, but in the following months, Tesla's stock gradually declined. By the end of 2017, Tesla's stock had decreased by 10% compared to the level when the Tesla Semi was introduced. Additionally, the initial development of the Tesla Semi was spearheaded by J.B. Straubel and Jerome as they looked at the inefficiency of diesel trucks with an electric vehicle manufacturer in mind. It's evident that the Tesla Semi was not a spur-of-the-moment decision to boost stock prices, but rather a strategic move aligned with Tesla's vision for the future of electric transportation. Moreover, producing the Tesla Semi to create a stock price pump is illogical because it targets the commercial sector rather than catering to individual consumers. The commercial truck market is much smaller than the passenger car market. 
If the goal were truly to boost stock prices, introducing models like Model 2 or other more accessible options would be a more reasonable choice than launching the Tesla Semi. The Tesla Semi, with its focus on commercial use, aligns with a broader strategy for sustainable transportation and is not just a tactic for short-term stock fluctuations. The research into a sleeper cab version of the Tesla Semi is exciting news for long-haul truck drivers. This version aims to provide drivers with a comfortable space for rest and relaxation during deliveries that span over 500 miles. Drivers for various companies will have a large sleeper berth at the rear of the truck, equipped with all the amenities comparable to a mobile home. However, when considering reality, the Tesla Semi Sleeper Cab faces a range of challenges with adding more space for the sleeper berth and increasing the weight of the vehicle. Reducing battery capacity to cut weight is an option, but it could also impact the truck's range. In the future, Tesla may adjust the range of the sleeper cab, potentially reducing it to around 400 miles or less, while offering an extended range option at a higher cost. However, there's also a possibility that Tesla will maintain the current range of the sleeper cab due to its significance in the long-haul transportation sector. The range for the Tesla Semi is not just a theoretical figure, but has been demonstrated through numerous real-world freight transportations, enhancing its reliability. Meanwhile, the Cybertruck may be more tolerant of a range reduction after delivery events, as customers are often more concerned about performance and off-road capabilities than range. So, what are your expectations about the new specifications for the upcoming Tesla Semi? While the electric Volvo VNR made waves in the US, it couldn't overshadow the Tesla Semi. Now, with a Super Truck 2 hybrid, Volvo aims for a groundbreaking leap, claiming a 100% efficiency increase surpassing even 134%. Armed with these impressive advancements, the Super Truck 2 emerges as a potent rival to the Tesla Semi, signaling a new heavyweight contender in the market. What makes Volvo Super Truck 2 considered a rival to Tesla Semi? Super Truck 2 truly was a proving ground for Volvo as a company to dream big, innovate big, and, and push the envelope. The design of the Black Panther, a hybrid truck by Volvo, deserves praise for its distinctive features, surpassing previous Volvo products. Its meteor-style patterns and mysterious black color make it visually appealing although black absorbs more heat, up to 82% than white. While reminiscent of 50% of the Tesla Semi and 40% of Kensworth T680, it maintains overall harmony. Compared to the Volvo VNR, the Super Truck 2 represents a significant advancement, reimagining exterior design and prioritizing cabin and trailer aerodynamics for improved airflow and speed without sacrificing fuel efficiency. Noteworthy features include a wedge-shaped cab, aerodynamic trailer, air-actuated adjustable ride height, and a camera monitoring system replacing traditional mirrors. Despite concerns about ground clearance, it outperforms its predecessor and achieves a 50% reduction in drag compared to the 2009 baseline, with a 20% improvement over Super Truck 1. So, can the operating parameters of the Volvo Super Truck 2 surpass the Tesla Semi? The fuel usage imbalance between a drilling rig and a Volvo truck poses greater challenges compared to comparing two vehicles running on the same type of fuel. However, to make a comparison, we can discuss the range achieved on the same amount of fuel when converting the units. Based on the information we have, the Super Truck 2 demonstrates impressive fuel efficiency compared to its predecessor and diesel-powered trucks on the market. Specifically, it achieves a fuel savings of 16 miles per gallon, representing a remarkable 170% improvement over the original Super Truck 1. In comparison, Daimler's Freightliner Super Truck 2 achieves around 12 miles per gallon, while most commercial trucks in the U.S. have a maximum fuel efficiency of about 10.5 miles per gallon. This becomes a particularly significant feature when considering the cost of one gallon of diesel in the U.S is $3.90. On the contrary, the Tesla semi-truck operates entirely on electricity, providing an equivalent energy consumption of 25 to 35 miles per gallon, depending on diesel and electricity prices. To make the information more understandable, for a Tesla semi to travel 16 miles, it requires 27 kilowatt hours of electricity. Elon Musk announced that the vehicle 
consumes 1.7 kilowatt hours per mile, and the current electricity cost is approximately 11 cents per kilowatt hour wholesale. In total, the electricity cost for a Tesla Semi to cover 16 miles is 297 cents, or $2.97. As a result, the Tesla Semi is still holds an advantage in demonstrating energy efficiency. We acknowledge that the maximum range of the Tesla Semi cannot be directly compared to that of the Volvo Supertruck 2 due to the different fuel sources. However, we dare to assert that the Tesla truck will save significantly more money for the driver over the same specified range compared to the Volvo hybrid truck. So, which one has a smaller weight for a more efficient transportation? We all know that electric trucks are government favorites allowing for an additional 2,000 pounds in gross vehicle weight compared to diesel and other fuel power trucks. Therefore, a drilling rig could have a total gross rate of up to 82,000 pounds instead of 80,000. This weight distribution could include a tractor weight of 26,000 pounds, a trailer weight of 17,700 pounds, and a payload of 38,300 pounds. The Volvo Supertruck 2 could potentially have a tractor and trailer combination weighing 27,000 pounds and a fuel weight of 2,000 pounds and a payload of 51,000 pounds. All the figures we considered were a maximum of 80,000 pounds, while the actual testing of the Volvo Supertruck 2 only managed a combined gross weight GCVW of 65,000 pounds instead of 80,000 pounds meaning it carried an actual payload of 36,000 pounds. Ultimately, this seems to be the powerful capability that the manufacturer mentioned, highlighting a 170% improvement in freight efficiency. What did Volvo do to reduce weight so effectively? Volvo engineers employed several weight reduction strategies to bring down the road weight to 27,000 pounds for the combination truck and trailer. Key to this was utilizing a rigid 4x2 European-style chassis configuration, employing fewer axles for the same payload. A shorter cabin design combined with a lightweight aluminum frame and a drivetrain system with a single composite drive shaft were integral components in achieving this weight reduction. The Tesla Semi falls of the Volvo Supertruck 2 in terms of weight and payload capacity, reflecting the fact that electric trucks tend to be heavier than diesel trucks due to their reliance on large battery packs for operation. In contrast, hybrid trucks operate on the principle of combining a diesel engine and an electric motor. The diesel engine is primarily used to provide power to the vehicle, while the electric motor is utilized to assist the diesel engine and operate the truck at low speeds or in congested traffic conditions. Therefore, the battery pack for a hybrid truck is relatively smaller and lighter, posing fewer weight-related challenges. So how are the voltage systems of the two trucks different? While the Tesla Semi currently maintains low voltage levels at 12 and 24 volts, the Supertruck 2 features a 48 volt mild hybrid system, an intelligent design that allows drivers to use convenience features without having to extend the running unloaded engine. This thoughtful integration emphasizes Volvo's commitment to efficiency in all operations. However, according to Dan Priestley, it is suggested that Tesla Semi will soon transition to a 48-volt system for the upcoming sleeper cap version, which is hinted for the next-generation drilling rigs. Hopefully, this will be available on the market soon, as Tesla has already implemented it for the Cybertruck. We must acknowledge the significant advantage of having a 48-volt electrical system in the Cybertruck. This voltage system can help the Volvo Supertruck 2 achieve fuel savings of up to 15% compared to a 12-volt electrical system. This is because the 48-volt electrical system can provide more power to electric vehicle devices without requiring a larger current. The 48-volt electrical system opens up new possibilities for innovative technologies in trucks, such as autonomous driving systems and electric suspension systems. This mild drivetrain uses a small electric motor to assist the combustion engine. The electrical system also contributes to enhancing fuel efficiency and reducing emissions. So, is there anything special about the price of the Volvo Supertruck 2 compared to the Tesla Semi? We think it could be on par or even less. We all know that the price of the Tesla Semi has been increased to around $250,000 currently, and electric trucks typically come with a higher price tag compared to fuel-powered trucks. From our research, 
Volvo trucks usually range from $120,000 to $200,000 for released models. In 2023, the manufacturer has not introduced any new truck models yet, and even the Super Truck 2 has revealed relatively little. Ultimately, while it may not be very feasible for a new generation hybrid truck to have a significantly lower cost, currently, based on the average selling price of Volvo trucks, it is considered cheaper than the Tesla Semi. Fortunately, it's important to notice that electric trucks save a small amount compared to diesel with a savings of $200,000 in the first three years for this big rate. How did Elon Musk change Tesla Semi's production plans? Up to now, the Tesla Semi has been limited in quantity, with around 90 units produced and distributed to various commercial companies, primarily PepsiCo with approximately 23 units. Recently, a Tesla Semi owned by Frito-Lay was discovered showcasing its impressive acceleration capability when fully loaded without towing anything, which left a remarkable impression. A few other Tesla Semis have also been spotted on the U.S. roads. But after all, is the Tesla Semi gradually becoming faded with limited quantities? According to Elon Musk, the mass production of the Tesla Semi will not commence until the end of 2024. Previously, Tesla had projected to manufacture 50,000 units by 2024, but now it appears that production may not align with Musk's earlier promises. Everything seems to be significantly behind the previously outlined plans. So why is Tesla Semi slower than what Musk promised? The initial rationale behind this decision can be attributed to the manufacturer's ambition to meet its sales target of 1.8 million vehicles in 2023, a goal that is on the verge of realization. Should Tesla prioritize the development of the Semi during this critical period, it risks diverting resources from more lucrative models like the Model Y, Model 3, and Cybertruck. This strategic shift could jeopardize the attainment of the sales target as the Semi's potential sales volume may not be substantial enough to make a significant impact, hindering overall market performance. Tesla grapples with formidable challenges extending beyond the production hurdles of the Cybertruck. A scarcity of essential components, including batteries and semiconductor chips, adds complexity to an already strained situation. The feasibility of manufacturing the Tesla Semi is further compromised, particularly as the Nevada factory is preoccupied with churning out batteries and drivetrains for priority models. The allocated investment of $3.6 billion in the factory appears increasingly insufficient to meet the growing demands and intricacies of the current predicament. Not stopping there, the slowdown in the production of the Semi might partly be because the manufacturer wants to obtain the most specific conclusions and experiences from PepsiCo drivers after nearly a year of accompanying the Tesla Semi. This feedback can be used to make modifications and additions for the next generation, especially the sleeper cap version. It's essential to remember that Tesla is not the only company developing large electric trucks. Other companies like Daimler, Volvo, and Rivian are also working on their electric truck models. This competition has prompted Tesla to focus on developing a distinct and premium electric truck to compete with major rivals. And the introduction of the Volvo Super Truck 2 has likely influenced Elon Musk's considerations in this regard. Compared to traditional fuel-powered trucks, the Tesla Semi may seem at a disadvantage. However, when compared to other electric trucks like the Volvo VNR or Freightliner eCascadia, Tesla Semi has demonstrated significant superiority in real-world tests. It excels in operating range, charging efficiency, and notable performance in events like Run On Less. Tesla Semi outperformed its competitors by achieving an impressive record of covering 1,076 miles in just a day, with only three quick charging sessions taking place in a relatively short time. The charging process brought the Tesla Semi's battery level up to approximately 47%, then 89%, and finally 52%. PepsiCo has shared that over 18 days of operation, Tesla Semi has handled up to 60% of the distance with a total weight exceeding 70,000 pounds. This figure approaches the limit of 82,000 pounds, a limit set for Class 8 trucks like the Tesla Semi, and is also the typical weight for freight hauling vehicles. Tesla Semi has also outperformed its competitive counterparts in the run-on-less event in terms of average daily mileage. Volvo has made significant advancements in redesigning its trucks compared to the older generations. 
Looking at the Cybertruck 2, we see agility and nimbleness, even though the manufacturer has not yet disclosed its performance details. Volvo's focus on aerodynamics will prove beneficial as they shift attention to the Super Truck 3, a truck that entirely excludes a diesel powertrain. Above all, Volvo Super Truck shows great promise and has many elements that are considered strong competitors to the Tesla Semi when it's released. We appreciate Volvo's efforts to reshape how they create impressive trucks. Volvo has been involved in truck production since the early days of the brand's establishment in 1929 with the LV60. In contrast, Tesla only introduced the Semi in 2017, but it has created a significant impact on the electric truck market and continues to attract attention to this day. The Tesla Semi not only stands out for its efficient operational capabilities, but also demonstrates Tesla's strong commitment to clean energy and greenhouse gas reduction. Diesel trucks constitute only 1% of vehicles, but they contribute 18% of CO2 emissions into the air. With its long range and heavy payload capacity, the Tesla Semi has now set a new standard for the freight transportation industry. This model not only helps businesses reduce fuel costs, but also positively contributes to the global community's goal of transitioning to clean energy. The Tesla Semi is more than just a truck. It's an icon of innovation and breakthroughs in the automotive industry. Its flexible design, reminiscent of the Shinkansen high-speed train and spacious driver area, create an advanced and safe driving experience. Simultaneously, Tesla's fast charging capability and widespread charging infrastructure ensure that the Tesla Semi can maintain high performance without disrupting the transportation process. So, are you more impressed with the Tesla Semi or the Volvo Supertruck 2? And what are your thoughts on the challenges Elon Musk is currently facing in the production of this big rig? We value your contribution. We hope you will have the most relaxing feelings after watching this video. If you did, please hit the like button and join the Tesla Car World family by subscribing to our channel. And don't miss out on any of our awesome videos by hitting the bell icon. We value your feedback and your time. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Until then, stay safe and have fun.